with him. I think at the minute, obviously, my focus is on is on Derby County and us staying up. But um, Manchester United, Everton, the two clubs who um, are very close to me, um, and hopefully one day in the future, um, if I can manage one of them two clubs, um, it'd be a great achievement for me. Wayne Mooney, eh? He's a player who wore his heart on his sleeve. I'll be honest, I, I remember coming out like and apologising to him when that documentary was released there on Amazon Prime because my relationship with him felt like it changed as a fan after what happened with him and Fergie and that spectacular fallout. But in this video, I want to run through all the latest comments from Wayne Rooney that he gave at an event this weekend uh, organised by Webby, I believe, and the quotes taken by The Sun. It's quite an ex explosive might be the wrong word, but there's some things he really important things that he says about Marcus Rashford, about managing Man United, about Rio Ferdinand, about Ronaldo, about Tevez. I thought it was a very interesting interview. As I said, he's someone who's a very honest person. That's why I always find it refreshing to listen to what Wayne Rooney has to say. So as I said, uh, the event uh, was held uh, by Webby. I think I don't know whether it was a hotel or football or not, but uh, the quotes have all been taken by the Sun. So just in case you're wondering where the actual interview came from came from there. But look, let's run through all these comments from Wayne Rooney because I think there's some really good, interesting talking points. And right now, hey, we need something that, that's not just about Ten Hag, isn't it? That's what I think anyway. This is what he said about uh, the idea of becoming Manchester United's manager. He said, the, re the whole reason for me going into management is to manage Manchester United. I got offered the job interview for Everton. I want to be Manchester United's manager. I know I'm not ready now, but I have to plan everything I do to make sure one day it will happen. And I love that. And how about this? Wayne Rooney, eh? In the dugout at Old Trafford. Let me know in the comments below whether you'd like to see it or not. I'll hold my hand up and say that when Wayne Rooney went into management, I didn't really think he was going to be that good a manager. I don't know. It, it, there's not... A, Great players don't always necessarily translate into becoming great managers. And I just felt that Wayne Rooney, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to explain it. I just felt like his characteristics uh, as, as, a, as a human, uh, as, a, um, as a professional, I didn't think they translate well into management. But what he's doing at the moment at Derby is nothing short of what well, he's on the verge of a miracle, really. And even if he doesn't manage to achieve it, what he's done there at Derby has massively, massively boosted his reputation. I want you to let me know, hey, look, I, I, I put this on Twitter down there as like United in 2030. What do you reckon? Eight years time, could we see Wayne Rooney down there in the dugout, maybe with uh, Kai, uh, Kai Rooney and Cristiano Ronaldo Jr., who are both scoring and playing for Manchester United's under 12s at the moment. Eight years time, both are 20 years old, Rooney in the dugout, winning the treble. Yeah, go on in, I'll take that. I'll take that very much. But yeah, do you think that he could manage Manchester United? Or do you think that's sort of a pipe dream of his and a pipe dream of, I suppose, of some United fans? You let me know what you think. But this next point I would say is the most interesting one and, and why I felt like I wanted to do this video. And that was Rooney's comments about Marcus Rashford. If you haven't seen him, this is what he said. He said, to get the record and be Manchester United's highest goal scorer is fucking massive. What I hope is that Marcus fucking gets his head out of his ass, goes and breaks that record. He is a Manchester lad. Now, the first thing I do when looking at that is give a round of applause. Absolutely give a little, well, a bit quiet round of applause there. I definitely give a round of applause to Rooney for that. As I said, he's somebody who wears his heart on his sleeve. He, he says things honestly and truthfully, and I always respect that in someone. But Rooney's comments there come from a place of affection, come from a place of trying to inspire Rashford to, you know, get back to where he was. Back when he broke through, was it the 2016 season? Back to where he was even in the 2019 season and go out there and break Rooney's record. He's encouraging Rashford to go towards there. And as I said, Rashford is somebody who's, he's lost his way. He's lost himself. I don't really know where Rashford's head is at right now, but it's certainly not, I would say, in the right place as far as his football goes. And Rooney's comments there, that they're not designed to sort of derail Marcus Rashford in any way, shape or form. They're there to sort of help him remember, yeah, okay, let's get back to where we were, we once were a couple of years ago, or even last season at points, although he was injured for a bit last season. I just like it. I like hearing footballers, I lo love hearing United footballers speak with honesty because there's, there's so much smoke and mirror these days that the honesty, it pierces through it when you hear it and when you see it. 
Hell, even from like the likes of Louis van Gaal with his interview that he gave about Eric Ten Hag and Manchester United being a commercial club. It's just, it's an honest approach. Ralph Radnick, I like the honesty. I'm so sick and tired of being fed a media trained comments and conversations by players designed to do certain things. It's, it it's almost feels manipulative. So to hear Rooney sort of talking like that about Marcus Rashford, it's from the heart. He wants what's best for Rashford. And we all do. I don't know whether it's going to come anymore, but that's, that's down to a conversation maybe we can have further down the line. But just to hear him speaking like that, I like that. And going back to, uh, I suppose, back to the house on days, eh? Fergie and Rooney. And I, I like this, this little snippet there from Rooney on uh, how he joined Manchester United. He said there, when Fergie tried to sign me when I was 14, he was on the phone to mum and dad. They said, Alex on the phone. United want to sign you. I said, I told him to fuck off. And I want to play for Everton. Went on to say, then as time went on, I knew I had to play for Sir Alex Ferguson. The reason I signed for United was Alex Ferguson. Something that I know Robin Van Persie would agree with. Something I know with so many Manchester United players would agree with too. And their relationship, eh? Uh, that time, as I said, that I saw Rooney as the first player to sort of break Fergie's power grip on the club. Fergie always maintained that no player was bigger than the club. And when Rooney came out and questioned the ambition of the club, and then he was on the he was on the link moving to City, he was even linked with Chelsea quite heavily too. And I remember Fergie backed down. At, at that point, I was so in Fergie's corner that I just sort of fell out of love with Rooney for a couple of years. Now that relationship, in my opinion, I've, I've, I've changed my view of Rooney. I've realised that I was a bit too stubborn at that point in the same way that Fergie was a bit too stubborn at that point because if we're being honest, Fer Rooney was completely right to question our ambition. What we're doing, selling the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and bringing in Gabriel Lobotan, and let's be honest, Antonio Valencia from Wigan. It might have turned out into a great signing, but it's Antonio Valencia from Wigan and you're letting Cristiano Ronaldo go. So I just like that. I like those comments. As I say, again, I like the honesty from it. Just like the, he's being honest about <laughs> his comments on Rio Ferdinand. This, this, I suppose, is the funniest part of it. He said, Rio is a top player, but he's just arrogant. You get paid a lot of money at United to kick the ball into the net. So just do it. I said, do your job and give me the ball. Give Ronaldo the ball. Stop standing there messing about. Rio is a top lad, but he sometimes did forget he was a defender. Now, if we're being completely honest, that's what made Rio Rio. Rio was the Rolls Royce defender because Rio was the perfect complement to Nemanja Vidic. You're no nonsense, burly, powerful, scary defender. And Rio Ferdinand was the ball player. Rio Ferdinand had a bit more craft to his game. Now, Rio Rio's actually reacted to these comments from Rooney, which might seem like inflammatory, but they're not in any way, shape or form. And this is what Rio had to say on it. Got a little bit full screen on this one. He's saying he, he's referring to when on the pitch we would argue either in front of everyone at Old Trafford. Me and him always argued. Uh, I'd be thinking, just shoot, man. Don't be doing all these fancy passes. I want you to be up there, cutting edge and bang. Waza could score two goals in a game but not be involved in the game. And he would come off with a hump because he was a street footballer. He wanted to be involved in a full 90 minutes. I like it. As I said, Rooney's just being honest. He might have had a couple of beers, might have been a little bit loose-lipped as Rio Ferdinand described in, that, in his reaction to that. But Rio was incredible at what he did, and he did it amazingly. Rooney was, Rooney was the most unselfish player I think Manchester United really have ever had because if you look at the players that he's played alongside and the things that he gave up for those players, it's incredible. And none more so than Cristiano Ronaldo. Him here speaking about that 2006 red card, and he said, look, I've got no, I've got no problem with Ronaldo at all. I have no issue with him trying to get me sent off because I tried to get him booked for the whole first half. That made me laugh as well, but... Rooney and Ronaldo there. What's that, 2009, that shirt? Yeah, I think it might be 2009. That was prime. 2007 to 2009, the prime of Rooney and Ronaldo. Well, no, maybe not Rooney and Ronaldo, but certainly the partnership. And Rooney was that runner inside. That Ro Rooney and Tevez were the runners that allowed Ronaldo to just concentrate on what Ronaldo wanted to do. That's why that front three worked so well. And Rooney was just a, a player who survived every single striker that came through from Ruvan Nistelrooy and Louis Saha through to, uh, well, he survived Robin Van Persie as well. He, did he? Did he leave before? I don't think he did. Rooney, Ronaldo, Tevez, Berbatov. The list is long, and Rooney survived all of them. 
because he had the right attitude, eh? And one pl one more one more thing that made me laugh here was uh was Rooney on Tevez. So I used to pick him up from his house for Champions League games and drive him to the airport. We play the game and come back, and honestly, I spoke to him for thirty minutes and I had no idea what was coming out of his mouth. He is mumbling. I'm not a great speaker. I'm thinking, fucking hell. He is mumbling and nothing. Nothing. I was devastated. It was the biggest disappointment of my life. That just made me laugh. Uh, and, yeah, and it, it reminded me of that team, eh? Look at that. Rooney with Tevez. Rooney with with Ronaldo. Rooney with Rio. Eh? The Halcyon days. But going back to what I said at the start of the video, and it was this, it was this comment that sort of um, made me want to do this video. Because to hear players speaking like that, it's coming from a place of affection. It's coming from a place where Rooney wants Rashford to be successful at Manchester United. Not he's trying to derail him and say things in a, in a horrible, snidey sort of way. I just like that. And I, I appreciate honesty from footballers and managers alike. And to hear Rooney here saying that, you know, every, if you ask me what, where I'm going to be in five years' time, I'd be like, I don't know where I'm going to be in five days' time, I don't know, five weeks' time. Rooney here is so firm in his mindset. Firm in the idea that he wants to be that man in the dugout at Old Trafford. That's his plan. So maybe in 2030, maybe whenever it will be, we will see Rooney in a dugout. Do you think that it will work at United? I suppose it all depends on what happens between now and maybe a position where he could become the manager. Three, four years when he's got proper experience under his belt. Because after the Solskjaer experiment... I can't imagine Manchester United can be trying to get uh, trying that again anytime soon. You let me know what you think about this uh, Rooney interview. Maybe this is a slightly different video to what I normally do on, on United People's TV. I'm more like focusing on talking points and, and news and, and transfers and all that. But I just really like this interview with Rooney, so I wanted to run through it. You let me know what you think in the comments below. As a, if you're new to United People's TV, would you please consider going down there, hitting that subscribe button? It's free. You support the channel. Boom! Hit the subscribe button. Boom! Hit the notification bell as well. You get a ding every time I go live with a video. But let me know what you think about that Rooney interview in the comments below.